Have you ever heard the story in the Bible where Jesus was talking about the kingdom of heaven and he talked about a rich man giving away talents to three of his servants? There's a lot of wisdom that can be unpacked from this passage and we're gonna jump into it today. Let's go. Hey guys, what's going on? Mark Cassara here. I talk on this channel about faith, family, and finances, and I like to unpack the wisdom of God within the ancient scriptures. And today we're going to talk about the talents. Guys, there's a story in the Bible where Jesus refers to the kingdom of heaven, and it's found in Matthew 25, 14. It's called the parable of the three servants or the parable of the talents. And so I'm going to read a little bit of this. I'll paraphrase it. I'll kind of skip through a little bit of it just to give you the essence of it. And then we're going to unpack it bit by bit. Okay. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of the man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money with them while he was gone. Now, here's how they, he breaks it up, okay? He gave five bags of silver or talents to one, two bags of silver to another, one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion. Here's the key right here. He divided it in proportion to their abilities, which means he knew his servants very, very well well at that point. Verse 16, he says, the servant who received five bags of silver began to invest the money and earn five more. In other words, he doubled his return. The servant who had two bags of silver went to work and earn two more by his ability. The, the king knew that his ability was only that he would be able to manage two bags at most. And so when he went, he sowed it and he invested it and he earned two more back. But the servant with only one bag, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, verse 19 says, after a long time, the master returned, he came back and the servant to whom he had entrusted five bags came forward and said, here, master, I have five more. Okay. The master was full of surprise. He said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have you have been faithful in handling the small, even though it was the most that he gave that, that servant. He gave him five versus the, the, the two or versus the one. He says, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling the small amount. Now I will give you many more responsibilities. It was a testing that was happening. Have you ever felt tested in your life? Have you ever felt like, God, you've blessed me with this portion. You've blessed me with this life. Maybe you've blessed me with this income that I'm making right now. And you know, we go through different levels in life. We may start way down here, but we'll work ourselves up over time if we're diligent. Well, that's a lot similar to what's happening in this story. God will give us these moments and he'll in, entrust us with these talents, right? It could be financial. It could be just your, your ability, okay? It could be some type of talent he gave you in the literal sense. And he'll entrust us to use those talents. And unfortunately, if we don't use them properly, we'll either lose them or we'll have to repeat the process over and over and over again. Have you ever been in a place where you feel like, you're just going around the mountain and around the mountain. Maybe it's time to sit still for a moment, quiet your soul down, disconnect from all of the distractions around you and say, God, what are the talents that you've given me? What, what is my ability right now? Have you given me the ability to have five talents Therefore, invest it and bring five more back. Have you built, give me the ability to have two talents or am I the one with the one talent and I'm, and I'm freaking out and scared and afraid to use that talent because I don't know what to expect. There's a feel of failure. There's a feel of people saying no to me. Think about that as we go through this scripture, okay? Verse 22, the servant who had two bags of silver or two talents came forward and said, master, you have given me two bags to invest and I have earned two more. He was faithful with the little that he had, even though it wasn't as much as that other guy had. Have you ever compared yourself to other people around you? Man, I'm guilty of this. I'm guilty of this every day, especially with the, with the explosion of social media. I'll scroll through TikTok or Facebook or Instagram and I'll see all these people, you know, these even young kids, these millennials making millions of dollars and I'll compare myself and I'll say, man, Lord, what did I do wrong? Why, why aren't I there yet? Why can't I be at that place? And the Lord kind of arrested me the other day and I was having a, a 
coffee meeting with a, you know, a friend of mine uh, that recently came into my life and, you know, seeking just some advice and just kind of talking to him about life. And, and, and we talk, started talking about this, the, the story of the talents. And he said, man, Mark, I've been there as well too. I've been there. I, I started this business alongside of another person, you know, four years ago. Uh, and he said, the person that I started with is light years away uh, as far as more successful than I am. He's making more money. He's seeing more clients. And I'm saying to my, this is the guy speaking to me. He said, I'm saying to myself, what did I do wrong? What turn did I miss? What do I need to go back and fix? And then he stopped for a moment. And he said, as he was going through this in his life, he said, the Lord told him or he felt in his heart. He said that, you know, sometimes God will give you five talents and he'll accelerate your growth so that you can make five more talents. But sometimes you're the servant that only has two. And that's the lot that the Lord has given you. And you're not supposed to have the jets and the planes and the million dollar homes yet because the Lord wants to make sure you're faithful with what you have right now. So sometimes our lot in life, we may be the guy with the two talents. We we may not be the guy that has the five talents, that is living this luxurious life or has all these things that he's able to access at any moment, you know, and he kind of flashes his five talents around. Who knows how that guy responded, right? He may have walked around with his chest puffed out, ruling the world because he felt like, the, the king haven't, has entrusted him with the most and he wasn't the one in the middle and he wasn't the one in the very beginning with the one talent. So sometimes we need to re, kind of revisit our life and say, where did you set me up, Lord? What, what talents have you given me? And, and am I using those talents properly? Because here's what he said with the guy with the two talents. The master said, well done, my good and faithful servant. It's the same exact response that he gave the guy with the five talents. The master's response didn't change. Check this out. He says, well done, my good and faithful servant. He was just as excited for the guy with the two talents than he was with the five. He said, you have been faithful in handling the small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Man, when we use those two talents, just like the guy used those five talents, but we're, we're using the two, and we invest and we sow, and we use them responsibly, and we're good stewards over them, and we reap back a harvest. We impact people's lives, and we reap back all the seeds that were sown grow into a magnificent harvest. The Lord is gonna come and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with what I've entrusted you. Now, I'm gonna elevate you. I'm gonna bring you up to the next level. I'm gonna promote you. Sometimes we're looking for promotion from man, but we really need to look for promotion from the Lord. Sometimes we look for promotion in all the wrong places when we need to be looking for promotion from the God who entrusted us first and foremost with these talents. Maybe the ability to speak, maybe the ability to convey messages, maybe the ability to work with your hands, maybe the ability to uh, problem solve or coach other people. He's given us these abilities and the Lord wants to promote you today. He wants to promote you today. Whether you have the five talents, whether you have the two talents, or whether you have the one, but warning here, don't be the guy that has the one talent. The servant came with the one talent and he said, Master, he was freaking out. He said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man. If I mistreated this talent and lost it some some way, somehow, I know you would have been upset with me. So he said, I'm paraphrasing by the way. He says, I know you're a harsh man harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. Who knows what fishy, shady business was going on back then with that king or that master. Maybe he was taking other people's monies when, when he shouldn't have been. Okay, we don't know. We don't know. But he said, I know you got you, you, you treated people this way. He said, I was afraid to lose your money. So I dug it and I hid it. And he may have been proud of himself. So many times we say, Lord, you've given us this ability. You give me this this talent, this ability. You've given me a little bit of money. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold on to it with my dear life. I don't want to lose it. I don't want to use it because it may disappear. Sometimes we have this scarcity mindset. When I was going through the scripture, I was thinking to myself, man, how many times have I been there where I have this scarcity mindset where you know, $1,000 comes in and I'm like, I don't want to touch it. I don't want to use it. It 
all the bills are going to take it. It's going to go away. And I've been struggling with that at, at times in my life where I'll make a lot of money, but I'll still be scared or I'll be, I'll be fearful that that money is going to go out the door. And that's the guy with the one talent. What are you doing with that money? Are you using it wisely? Or are you spending it frivolously? Or are you digging a hole and just hiding it and, and clutching it with your hands? Clutched hands never end up working in the long run. Open hands always end up getting more back in the long run. So the guy with the one talent said, I, I dug a hole and I planted it because I was afraid to lose your money. And now the master comes back and he says, you wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant or gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit that money in the bank at the very least and earn a little bit of interest on it, right? Get that money moving for you. Now we can take this in so many different directions. We could talk about what are we doing with our finances? Are we paying ourselves first? Are we investing that money? Are we allowing that money to grow? Or are we just keeping that money in the bank, hopefully hoping it doesn't disappear? Some of the practical things that we can think about, are we using the money that we have and, and, and tithing, putting 10% to God no matter what, whether it's to a local church or to a charity or, or just donating it to people that are in need? Are you being that open, or do you have that open hand mentality where you're able to give away so you're not clutching onto that money? Because when you clutch onto it, when you chase after it, it's gonna run away from you. But when you, when you go after purpose and impact, that money's gonna flow to you. So he said, why didn't you even just put it in the bank? At least you could earn some interest on it. Then he ordered, take the money from the servant I gave one to, because he didn't do anything with it, and give it to the guy who had five. He says in verse 28, he says, take the money from the servant and give it to the one with the 10 bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given back to them, and they will have abundance. But for those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away from them. So there's a couple lessons to be learned here, guys. If we don't use our talents properly, we may lose the opportunity that they offer us. We may lose the opportunity to use those talents and that opportunity will pass by us. And it may go to the next person. See, see, sometimes God tests us. And if we fail that test over and over and over again, he'll take his anointing, he'll take his talents. He'll take that opportunity to a person who is open and willing and and ready to invest in those talents or that opportunity. We learned a little bit about stewardship. Guys, stewardship, what God has given you, are you being a good steward over it? Are you using it properly? Whether physical, whether emotional, spiritual, doesn't matter. Are you using it properly? Are you investing it? Are you bringing back a return? Are you making an impact with the money or the talents, the skills that he's given you? Number three, accountability. Accountability. We all will answer at the day of judgment. We all will answer God when we are standing before him and he's gonna say, what have you done with the talents that I've given you? And his response may be, well done, good and faithful servant. Or his response may be the opposite. You wicked fool. You, you totally you didn't use those talents properly. You wasted them. You could have at least made them work for you a little bit and got a little bit of interest back. It's the reward of faithfulness. Faithful stewards are recognized and rewarded. But there's also a consequence of inaction. Fear of failure and inaction can result in loss of talents and loss of opportunities. There's so much wisdom that you can unpack from this parable. I challenge you to go through this in Matthew 25 and read it. Read it once, read it twice, read it three times, write down notes, read it again, write down notes, and ask God, what are you speaking to me through this scripture? You know, we can read scripture over and over and over again. The cool thing is, the word of God is living because every time you read it, you can get something new from it. Every single time you read it, you can get some type of new perspective from what you're reading. So I encourage you, here's your homework. Open up Matthew 25, read the parable of the talents, read it a couple times and sit with it and say, Lord, where have you given me talents? Have I been a good steward over the, those talents? Have I used those talents appropriately? And have I used them efficiently to impact the world 
around me. With that being said, guys, I appreciate you following up on this video. Make sure you click the thumbs up bell, click the subscribe button, share this video with a couple friends, and most importantly, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you took from this passage, from this video, and let me know what other insight that you have that maybe I can learn from. I look forward to reading your responses, and until the next video, make sure you live well, laugh loud, and learn to be a better you. We'll see you in the next one.